Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and this is the last video on box modeling. And we have two final tricks to show you. Hinged or flipping polys and following or extruding along a path. And then we're going to go to Swift 3D. I'm going to show you how to bring in uh, textures, and then we're going to uh, show you how to use the advanced modeler. So let's go to it right now. Let's go ahead and go to uh, 3ds Max, and let's go ahead and pull a box out on the stage. I'm going to hit Alt W to expand that. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and create an edible poly. Let's convert this to an edible poly. I'm going to click on one of the sides here. Hit 4 when in edible poly mode. Hit 4. And I'm going to hit Control Shift A. Now that's one of my uh, program commands for inset. Let's inset that a little bit. And I'm going to show you how to basically use a hinged edge. So let's come along here, go down over on this. Uh, commands over on this side. You can see right here this hinged edge. So let's click on the box real quick. And when we click on pick hinge, that's where you're going to pick the hinge the edge at. And then you can see what you're doing here is as you change this, the edge is hinging up and down. Isn't that super cool? I just thought it was a lot of fun. I wanted to show that to you before we moved on. I actually have used this command quite a bit in modeling uh, exterior buildings. So it's, it's a lot of fun to use. Okay, we've shown you our first trick. Let's show you our second trick. We're going to extrude along a spline. I'm going to click on this box right here and uh, hit Alt W to expand. Then we're going to bring out a box on the stage. There you go. And let's control R just to rotate around a little bit. I'm going to hit Q and right click and convert to an edible poly. And let's hit 4 to get on to the fourth polygon and click polygon. And now we're going to bring a spline out of the stage. So let's click uh, the shapes and hit um, arc. I'm going to draw an arc here. There you go, nice little arc. Cool. At this point I'm going to go ahead and click on my poly again. Q, click, 4 on my poly. And I'm going to go ahead and hit, um, come down here and find a command, extrude along spline. Let's click on that. It says go ahead and pick a spline. So I'm going to click here to pick the spline. And look at that, we extrude it along that spline. Isn't that super cool? Now we can kind of change some of the parameters here. We can increase the amount of extrusions, that's right. And we can taper it. Ooh, isn't that pretty cool? Yeah, it is. You can do a few more things. I'm going to hit the uh, taper curve if you want to a little bit there. And you can twist a little bit if you want to as well. Hit OK. And let's go ahead and Control R to rotate around. Look at that. Made a raptor claw. Isn't that pretty cool, huh? Yep. And that is the uh, extrude on path. Pretty cool. I just had to show you those two. They're just lots of fun. Let's move on to Swift 3D and show you how to put a texture into Swift 3D. Okay, what we're looking at here is basically a panorama that we've been building. And the image itself comes from Bryce. So you can render a 360 panorama in Bryce if you're familiar with that uh, software. We'll be doing some tutorials on it to bring you up to speed with it. However, the cool thing about Bryce is it comes with a number of resources and it also comes with a number of bitmaps and materials. I'm going to show you how to import some of those bitmap materials into Swift 3D. So let's bring up Swift 3D and take a look at it. Now what I'm looking at is the plane that we created, or jet plane we created in uh, 3ds Max. And it's, in and it's in Swift 3D now and we've used a number of the bitmaps materials that were already in there. But the thing about Swift 3D, it doesn't really ship with enough bitmap materials. You need to import new bitmap materials. We'll get some of those from Bryce right now. I want to show you how to import new materials into Swift 3D. So Swift 3D does not ship with enough material resources or bitmaps. So we can go ahead and add those. And What you want to do is go to Setup, click on Materials, and go to Add Material. It's that simple. And under uh, Procedural Solid or Pattern, come down here and click on Bitmap. And then we can pull those bitmaps from anywhere. And where I'm pulling them from are basically from the Bryce resource files. If you go to Program Files in the Bryce and go to uh, the content and go to Legacy and go to uh, Tilings, there's tons of stuff like design, food, marble, metal. Let's click on marble, metal, excuse me, and click on uh, thumbnails. And there's a nice metal right there. We'll click on that. And we want to give that metal a name. We'll call it a new metal just so we can see it. So my spelling right here. And OK. And now that new metal is going to be transferred to my metal materials. And if I go to my scenes right here, we see the first metal is a new metal. And I can just grab that and 
dump it right into my plane. And there my plane has a new skin. So that's how easy it is to actually add materials to Swift 3D. Now, you're going to go, hey, this guy's pretty smart. No, I'm not. Uh, you can learn everything you want from uh, Swift 3D, about Swift 3D, from their website. So E-Rain has a support tutorial. So let's go there right now. So we're on the E-Rain site right now, and we're on the tutorial section, and there's just tons of tutorials right here. Let's go to the five. And you can see the scene editor, extrusion, and advanced modeler. And this is what I want to talk about now. Basically, Swift 3D talks about modeling in terms of Legos, which we talk about building with primitives, or molding with clay, which we talk about box modeling. So you can actually box model in Swift 3D by going to their advanced modeler. We're going to do that real quick and just show it to you. And once we've shown it to you, we'll be done with this whole series. So now that we know where to get the tutorials from, let's take a look at the advanced modeler. It's the last thing we're going to look at in this series, and uh, I'm so happy to be done. It's been a long series, but there's a lot in it, and I hope you find some use in it. Okay, so in this tutorial, I want to show you how to use the advanced modeler. Basically, you want to come along here and hit advanced modeler, and then you're going to draw a cube on the stage. I don't like the viewports, though. It's, it's kind of crunched up here, so let's just put two across the stage. So you can go to view and click on viewports, and click on one left, one right. I'm going to draw your cube on the stage here. And you can see, once again, it is in terms of triangles. And there is a vertex mode and an edge mode and a poly mode, just like in 3ds Max. And so I can click, uh, click on, once I'm in the poly mode, for example, I can select and click on the different polys. Let me get off of that real quick. There you go. See how I'm se selecting and control to get off of those? Cool. Uh, it has the same commands. Can I use your my move command? You notice that from, uh, in a sense, from, let's select the object. Here's my move command. You notice that from us 3ds Max. Here's my rotate command. I can rotate my object. Uh, here's my, uh, in a sense, my sizing command, sizing it back and forth. So a lot of the same things that you saw before. It has extrusion. That's going to right click on it. You can see uh, extrude. So I can do a free extrude right here. Click on one to let me get off of this. Hit uh, poly mode. Click on one of the polys, and let's right click and do extrude. Do a free extrusion. There we go. You see I'm extruding. Isn't that pretty cool? So uh, it's a little different than uh, 3ds Max, but it has a lot of the same basic commands. So if I just want to show this to you to let you know that it's here. You can see everything's being drawn in triangles, like I mentioned earlier. And that's why it's such a great um, transition from Swift 3D to Carlotta, because Paper Vision needs triangles. Swift 3D draws in triangles. It's just a natural transition. But the cool thing about this, if you don't have 3ds Max, you can still produce dynamic models in Swift 3D. So that's all I have to say. Um, I hope you enjoyed this series. Uh, it was a lot of fun putting together, and I think we covered a lot of material. So, see you next time. This is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University.